Hi, I'm Bart Polson. This video is a walkthrough from an exercise in Zed Shaw's book, Learn Python the Hard Way. If you go to learnpythonthehardway.org and click on Read the Free HTML Online, it'll take you to the table of contents. And in this video, we're going to be doing exercise 24, which is called More Practice. Click on that, it'll take you to this page. And what we're doing really is just going over things that we have done previously. And so we have this. You know, it's a pretty substantial amount of code. And I'm going to go through it bit by bit in Text Wrangler, and then we'll see how it works when we print it out on the console. All right. Let me go here to Text Wrangler. If uh, that's because I'm on a Mac, you can also use Notepad on Windows or, truthfully, any text editor that you have. That's fine. Let's go through things one at a time. The first thing is it says print. Let's practice everything. So it's going to display that over here on the console at, in the command line. When we run the program, that's going to show up. And then on a, the next line, it's going to say, you would need to know about escapes with uh, black slash that do new lines and tabs with lots of things in it. Remember, an escape means in, within a string, sometimes you have a command that's supposed to do something, not, not just print out what's there. So for instance, uh, an easy one is, you know, up here he's got double quotes around this quote. So that's easy. And he's got an apostrophe with inside. An apostrophe and a, and a single quote, although typographically distinguishable, are the same thing on the keyboard. And so he says, let's practice everything. And then this one you see is in single quotes. It begins and ends with single quotes. And so the fact that he's got an apostrophe inside it, it would normally read that as the end of the string. Ex um, except because Zed put the backslash here, that is the escape character. And what it means is read the next thing, not literally, not the way you would normally read it, but read it as a special command or read it in this case as a symbol that does not mean that the, the string is finished. So that's what we have here. We're escaping the apostrophe. Here's another one where we're escaping apostrophe. The double backslash is a way of printing a backslash because, and the trick of course is a backslash is the escape character. So if you have one just all on its own, it's gonna expect a, an escape command after it. And so to get a single backslash to print as a, as sort of as, a, as, a, as an image as, and not as a command, you need to do the double backslash. So you escape it and then you put a backslash. The backslash n is for new line and notice that because he has a space uh, after the backslash n there will be a space at the beginning of this line if you don't want that you actually put it you smash the word right up next to the uh, n and the same thing here with tabs the backslash t is the code for tabs so insert a tab here and because he has a space after it there will be a tab and a space uh, that goes into that anyhow so you need to backslash uh, to escape things. That's good. All right, then he has an extended string in triple quotes. He's using triple double quotes. You can use triple single quotes if you want. And it all goes into a variable or an object called poem. You can, and again, that, that name's arbitrary. You can call it whatever you want. And because he has the triple quotes right here, but then he starts on the next line, it means there will be a blank line at the top of this when it prints in the console. It starts with a tab, so because it's a poem, sometimes you know the justification is a little funky. And the lovely world with logic so firmly planted cannot discern. And then here we have a new line and a space, so it'll break into the next line and move it over just one step. The needs of love nor comprehend passion from intuition and requires an explanation. And this means new line. Now we're already on a new line, and by putting that character in there, it means it bumps it down yet one more, so there'll be an empty line in between. And then this is two tabs. So it's going to move it over a total of 16 spaces because the tab, um, when we use it this way in Python, bumps it over eight spaces where there is none. And then we have the uh, the closing triple quotes on a new line, which means there will be a blank space at the end. All right. By the way, as soon as I read this, I started Googling it to try to find out who it was. And uh, well, at the bottom, under common student questions, Zed says he wrote the poem, which explains why I could only find references to him. So good for you, Zed. Now this command, this set of three commands is going to take the poem, because remember, this one doesn't print the poem, it just creates a variable or an object that holds the content of the poem. If you want to see the poem, you have to print it. 
And that's what this does. This prints, and what this one does is it's actually printing this little dash line. So the dashes are gonna show up in the console, and then it says print poem. And then it's gonna print this whole thing right here, and then it's gonna put some more dashes at the end. All right, then we're gonna do a few other things. We're gonna create a variable called five, the word five, and it's gonna have a little bit of math. 10 minus two is eight, plus three is 11, minus six is five. And then print, so now show to the console, this should be five, and then it refers to this variable, um, the percent sign s, that's a, called a format, and the s is for a string, so it's actually gonna be reading this as a string here, and it's gonna be referring back to this number that we just created. All right, then we have a formula. This gets a little complicated. DEF means define the formula. Secret formula is the name, and you can call it whatever you want. It has to be one word, letters, numbers, and underscores only, and can't start with a number. And then it's gonna take a single argument. We have to provide one piece of information, which within the a uh, function that we're creating here, that piece of information will be fed into a variable called started. We're not gonna see the variable started, it's just it, that's what it's dealing with internally here. And again, you can call that whatever you want. So what he's gonna have is a few variables that are defined within the function. There's gonna be a variable called jelly beans, and that gets a value that's equal to the number in started times 500. There's gonna be a variable called jars, which is equal to the number of jelly beans divided by 1,000, and then those crates, which is the number of jars divided by 100. So you see how it's sort of uh, cascading down here. And then it's going to return three values. Again, what return does is it makes values available for Python to use. It doesn't put them into variables uh, externally, it doesn't print them or anything, but it makes it available to be used in other things, which we'll see in a moment. Now. Um, the important thing here is that these names, jelly beans, jelly, un jelly underscore beans, jars, and crates, these are the names of the variables within the function. Um, in that sense, they're, they're an example of what's called a local variable. Um, there are certain sort of situations where you can define a variable like within a function, and that variable name only exists in that function. And that's as opposed to a global variable, which exists everywhere in the program. And you can actually have where a local variable and a global variable have the same name, but because they have different scopes, the local variable only applies, for instance, to the function definition, there's not a conflict. It can lead to confusion, though. I uh, just want you to be aware of that. So here we have, we're defining a new variable called start point, and we're assigning a value of 10,000 to that variable. And then this next line, we're calling the function. So we're gonna run the function secret formula that we just defined right up here. And we're going to use this variable that we just made called start point, And we're gonna feed that in as our one argument, the one piece of information we have to provide for the function secret formula to work. And then what it's gonna do is it's going to create three variables and assign values to them. We asked for these three variables. Now, normally you have to put a variable and then you put the equals, which is the assignment operator, and you put the value that you're gonna to assign to it, and you do you would do those on separate lines. Um, one exception is if they all have the same value, you can put variable, 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 and then equals you know 100, and they all get 100. But this one's interesting because secret formula returns three values. We can take those three values and feed them into new variables, in order. Now, an interesting thing here is that while jars and crates are the same right here, the same names right here and right here, you notice that this one is jelly beans within the function, but this one right here in our sort of our overall program is called beans. They don't have to have the same name because it just fills them in in order. It just says one, two, three. And so I say here, you could call them X, Y, Z if you wanted, because these are uh, variables that are used outside here and it just fills them in the order they're listed. That's all you need to know about that. Then we're gonna use um, the print to set some stuff to the console. And it says, with a starting point of D, that's you know uh, our format for digit, and the start point, that's the variable we created right here. So it's gonna put 10,000 right there. And it says, print, we'd have so many beans, so many jars, and so many crates. And then it takes the values that we just got 
from right here by calling the function. And then we're going to make a change. We're going to take the start point variable and we're going to modify it. Now this is a this is a variation of the increment function where we're just going to take the value we're going to assign to that value the current value divided by 10. And I know it looks weird to have this, you know, that x is equal to x divided by 10, but it's okay to do that because what it does is it takes the existing value divides it by 10 and then assigns it to the new one. And it's it's a nice way of working with a single variable that you want to have several values as you go through. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to call on this function and we're going to say we can also do it this way. We'd have uh, so many beans, so many jars, so many crates. And then this time, instead of specifically referring to the variables that we created right up here by calling, so we called on the function and we created variables and assigned values to them. This time we skip those uh, intermediate variables and we just call on the function. And it's going to put its three values into these three spaces that we have in here. And so it's actually a very a uh, clean way. It's a little faster, a little easier way of running the function and using that. So now we can go over here to the console. And now I recently started, so I'm in my root directory. BP is the name of my computer. The tilde stands for my working, my root working work directory. If I do PWD, you see it's users.bar. That's on my Mac. So I need to change it to this one that has my scripts in it. And so I'm going to do CD and then space. Now, by the way, I don't have to change it to this. I can also just give the entire path to the file. That's one way of doing it, but it's a little easier to be working in here. So I do CD and a space. And then here from the finder, I just drag the folder in and it, it puts in the whole path and it's a long path. And I hit return. And now I'm in my scripts folder. I'm going to clear this out by just typing the word clear. And now I type Python and exercise ex24.py. And there you go. Let's practice everything you need to know about scapes with backslash that do new lines. You see it broke it down into a new line. Let's get that. This is the one we're looking at right now. There's the, It broke it into a new line and it put the space after it and tabs and it put a space there too. Great. Then we have these... Uh, dashes that were printed by this right here. Because remember, this doesn't print the uh, poem, it just defines it or loads it into an object. Then we call on it, and you can see the way that the spacing works on this particular one. It has a tab at the beginning, it's got a new line and a space here, it's got a new line and two tabs at the bottom. Looks like a poem. And then we've got the uh, row of dashes here at the bottom. And then it goes straight into uh, the math. We get five from doing our little bit of math. Then we have the jelly beans where it prints our starting point and it does the math and it fills us in. The first time it goes through, it's using the intermediate variables, beans, jars, and crates that we created right here by calling the function. On the other hand, the second time we run it through and we get different values because we've divided the starting point by 10. That's what we did right here. Then we just call the value, excuse me, we just call the uh, function and it fills it all in directly, and we get these numbers. Anyhow, that's all there is in exercise 24. It's a lot of stuff, but it's all a uh, refresher of things that we've done already, and we're going to have more of that in the next uh, exercise, so I'll see you there momentarily. Thanks.